welcome to Rugby Saturday here at Albuquerque's International Balloon Fiesta Park. My name is Aaron Rivera. I'm joined by Hero Prinsu to uh, bring you our consolation matches for the state championship. Today we're going to be seeing the El Dorado Eagles on the left in their white and the Albuquerque Dukes on the right and they're going to be wearing the yellow and red jerseys. Hero, how are you doing today? I'm good, mate. Thanks. Thanks for having me out here. What a fun day, quite windy, I guess. Uh, good for rugby still. Uh, excited to watch this matchup. Absolutely, and the wind's going to uh, definitely make a big difference when it comes to the kicking. Uh, you know, right now we see El Dorado's got the wind at their back, so it's going to be a lot easier for them to put through kicks. You, uh, you know, I know at the high school level, kids aren't really uh, kicking all the time. Do you think with the wind at their back, they might take a couple penalty shots? I'm sure that that would definitely be the smart thing to do. Uh, teams in New Mexico tend to play ball in hand rugby, which is always very attractive to watch. <laughs> but, you know, we'll see how they deal with the wind and if they use it smartly. Absolutely, yeah. We've seen uh, a lot of wind so far in the season, but this is probably the windiest day for the actual high schoolers. We saw a couple of weeks ago we had the Rio Grande in Arizona uh, club championships and they were playing in the wind and what we saw a lot of was teams not really adjusting you know trying to spin the ball out wide with a really deep back line and the ball just getting away from everybody that's right that certainly was a very windy day and the Arizona teams like to spin the ball wide so that was certainly challenging I'm sure uh, however you know they they dealt pretty easily with uh, most of the New Mexico sides yeah pretty handily you know it was an all Arizona final but looks like we're getting ready for kickoff our referee today is going to be Maka Satini and we're going to have Doc Diana or Doc Richardson and Diana Anderson working as our uh, assistant referees Doc is here on the close side Diana on the far side there's the whistle and that ball goes up El Dorado's kind of standing around so we see immediately that ball taken forward by uh, the Dukes and Dukes are rushing it in that's Mateus Mitchell and don't see a signal yet, but he's going to signal the try. So, no well, penalty. He actually uh, signaled the penalty there. So uh, the El Dorado player was tackled and uh, never released the ball. No. Just got straight back up to his feet. And we see Caleb Marsh pushing forward. He does a little pooch kick, but it goes out of bounds. So that was going to be a pretty good scoring opportunity there for the Dukes. But unfortunately, he didn't try to play the ruck. Yes, yeah, so that's uh, actually a very uh, misunderstood law at the moment. Uh, the releasing the ball when you're on the ground, uh, but being able to get up when the tackle's not being completed. So that's what happened there. Is, uh, the referee saw that as a completed tackle and they uh, penalized the team for it. Absolutely. And we saw the Dukes succeed on their own line out. They're still pretty close to the uh, edge, but looks like that little bobble is going to be uh, penalized for them, or is he calling him offside? He's there? calling him offside. We're going to see Caleb March with that ball. With the wind at his back, he sure got some distance there. Yes, that is a very good kick. Um, he saw that they had no one back there, so he just kept it in field and had it roll out. Looks like they put them out at about five meters from the uh, from the try line. So that's a really great kick for, uh, for the Eagles. Quick, very quick reversal for them because just a minute ago they were within their own five and now they're right on the cusp of scoring. We're going to see that ball thrown in by Lane Cuthbert. Cuthbert puts that ball in. It's kind of bobbled a little bit and it goes straight back out of bounds. So looks like the Dukes are going to get an opportunity to try their hand. No, she's signaling to the Eagles. Well, the Eagles are going to try it again this time. Hopefully they hold on to that ball. The Dukes do contest it. They're going to start spinning it out wide. And he tried to kick that ball, kicked it straight into, uh, straight well, Aaron, into David he, Allison. He kicked it into one of his uh, own players. <laughs> or, uh, it was charged down and then touched by one of his own players, I guess. Um, the referee saw that as being offside accidentally, of course. Yeah. So the uh, Dukes get a chance to uh, relieve the pressure. And we see that ball kicked out. They're now outside of their own 22. Just a little bit better uh, room there for the Dukes. And so far the lineouts have been a little bit shaky for El Dorado. So with the Dukes putting that ball in, I'm sure they uh, expect to get it back. 
their lines playing pretty uh, pretty flat right now. And he gets ready to go. He sends that in. That ball's caught and taken by Salman Luna. Now they're charging forward with it, bouncing off tacklers. Just charging through. Finally goes down. Tosses that ball out. He picks it up. And the Dukes are just trying to set themselves up. That was taken forward by uh, Alex Carruthers. And taken this time by Nick Botioso. Referee playing an advantage there. And there's Carruthers with the ball one more time. And that ball is spun out to the eight man. Benny James pushes it forward. He offloads it to Salman Luna. Luna tries to speed that ball out, but instead Isaac Stinson has to take it. He goes out of bounds with it. And the Eagles have let the Dukes get deep in their territory, but again, they were able to uh, keep their defense stiff enough to prevent the score. As we see Lane Cuthbert with that ball. Mike Satini's uh, making sure that the lines are properly around the tunnels. And they throw it. The Dukes win this one again. We see Stinson with that ball. He tries to dodge through, but he can't beat the big boys. He just sends it out to the back. Marlon Malave takes that ball. They're pretty close to the sidelines one more time. Well, Aaron, I can tell you one thing. The uh, Eagles coaches will be a bit concerned at the moment. They are being dominated up front by the Dukes forwards, losing their own lineouts, being dominated in the rucks. And the Dukes are certainly putting phases together well. And if this continues, I am sure that it would become very troublesome for the uh, Eagles. Well, despite, uh, despite that tough loss that they took looks like he's calling him for uh what was that a knock, a knock on. forward mm -hmm. yeah what a shame you know they have the wind behind them like we said in the beginning of the game they have the wind behind them they should just relax get the ball down the field get out of their own zone get out of their own danger zone and uh play in the opposition half well, that was uh, a bit hasty i think irrational should have kept this cool well like you said, the uh, Dukes have been winning in the forward pack. We'll see how the first scrum of the game goes. This is going to be taken by Ethan Pacheco. He feeds it in there. Pacheco can't quite find the ball. There it is. He sends it out, but not to his own player. They have to chase that ball down. A little bit of confusion in the back line, but now taken out. Stinson fights through. And that ball's kind of sitting in, out the back. Pacheco offloads that ball. It's going to be lost, but the Dukes hold on to the possession, and the referee lets them know it's not forward. And taken forward now. You can certainly see that the uh, Dukes forwards are smelling blood. Uh, they feel that they have the advantage, and they keep pick up, pick, picking up around the rucks, and they are certainly, you know, going forward every time. So the uh, Eagles need to sharpen up on their defense around there without getting sucked in, of course. Yeah. But it seems every time that they do push forward, they end up out of bounds. It definitely is. So Should um, they be playing the other direction, or how do you solve that issue? Well, you could. The Dukes win again on the line out. You could certainly go the other direction. Um, it's very possible that they feel they're trying to suck the Eagles in. Um, if you look at the field space out wide while the Dukes Build, start building phases there's still there's definitely a lot of space and um, I think that's what they're going for I think they keep playing the small side uh, try to suck in Eagles defenders it's certainly working but they need to realize that they then need to spin it wide because that's where the space is and we see the Eagles just kind of offload that ball to uh, Joshua Wilbur Wilbur goes down into uh, touch and the Dukes have taken that ball back it's being run forward by uh, Mateus Mitchell Mitchell almost had the try earlier, and he's almost here as well. Oof, big takedown by the Eagles. Not playing advantage though, and they start coming out. They do have some support, but looks like the Eagles win that ball back. It was taken by Thomas Ingram. 
Referee is playing a penalty here. What happened? Knock forward. Knock forward. I think he just got a little bit of a try line fever there. <laughs> saw the uh, saw the white line every five meters out, and uh, didn't notice there were about four defenders in front of him, and he had no uh, he had no support around. Might have been a good idea to just spin it wide to the wing, see if he could have a go at it. Certainly more, more mobile than the uh, big eight man. Yeah, and we've seen uh, so far Isaac Stinson's uh, willing to try and dance around defenders, but El Dorado puts that ball in. They send they lose it to uh, the Dukes. Ball is in the try zone, but it looks like it might be held up. And looks like he's going to go check with his touch judge to determine probably an offsides or they might be something. I can't imagine him going over there to see if the try was scored. Doc on our side of the field was certainly much closer. Um, so unless there was some sort of offense. Try awarded, it's not between the sticks, so it definitely wasn't a penalty try. Absolutely, and that first one's gonna put five points on the board. That try was scored by the number nine, Andres Rialoba. And so now Volcan or sorry, the Albuquerque Dukes have five points. Do they try to put that ball, kick the ball uh, for two? They missed the kick. Oh, they did. Um, the Eagles going for the quick kickoff. He's found some perfect spacing. Chased down by Stinson. Duke's in trouble here. Well, Stinson oh. dodges a tackle. Some bad he tackling out from of bounds, the uh, Eagles. Unfortunately for him, but yeah, as you said, bad tackling. And had he uh, had he not stepped out of bounds there, he probably would have uh, had a try. Yes, beating two defenders there. Um, uh, that's uh, that's not great defense. And uh, let's see how this uh, set phase goes, because what we just saw down on the other end of the field is the uh, Duke scoring off a set phase of the Eagles. And the Dukes are still perfect in the lineouts. They won another Eagle one, but the wind is kind of taking that ball, making it difficult for them to work with. A lot of mistakes so far in the game, handling errors from both sides. I guess it could be attributed to the wind, maybe. Maybe some nerves. You know, playing uh, their last game of the season for a lot of these seniors. And uh, I was talking to one of the coaches for the Dukes, uh, Tim Hardy, and he was mentioning that most of his squad, you know, almost all of the forwards except for uh, the number one and the number five, they're all seniors. So this is probably going to be the last high school game that they play. Save for the sevens tournament coming up. But True. Well, that's always very emotional, you know. Well, boys will be playing with a lot of heart, as we've seen them do so very much um, this far. The Dukes especially, like you mentioned. Yeah. Um, they seem to be up for the challenge, and they're really hard running strong at the uh, Eagles struggling to bring their players down. He's trying to get the scrum set, but having a little bit of difficulty. This is the, he's going to have him reset a little talk to the front line. We see Ethan Pacheco of the Eagles with the ball in hand, so. This close to the try line, especially after uh, how the game's been going so far, you would expect that the Eagles really want to put some points on the board. Certainly true. And the ball comes back out of the scrum. We've got a feel that the uh, Eagles forwards uh, feel pressure at the moment. It's their first real opportunity to get some points on the board. And they haven't really won any of their set phases, so they must really be reeling to uh, to get this ball out and get it to their backs. Mm -hmm. And we'll see them try one more time. The ball fed in. It does look like it's coming out the uh, eagle side. Nope, the Dukes look like they've definitely scrummed over it, and they have that ball. It's cleared out there by uh, their number 10, Mike uh, Labatai Sagato. And we see Josh Graham with that ball in hand. And he goes down. He's been uh, swapping positions a lot lately. He moves uh, around. He was playing scrum half two weeks ago. He was playing the inside center, and I saw him play 10 a few times at the beginning of the season. So. 
You know, Aaron, looking at uh, looking at the two teams, the uh, Eagles' attack seems to, you know, be without a plan. They're bunching up. Uh, it's almost as if they don't trust their forwards. All of them seem to be standing really close to the rucks. Well, we see that ball taken forward right now by Joshua Wilbur. And yeah, that, luckily he had the support there, but he kind of ran even before his guys knew what was going on. And we see the advantage being played right now. And that ball pushed forward by Daniel Garcia. As he goes down to Damn it, we see uh, our damage. And then we see Caleb March take that ball forward. He offloads it to the hooker lane, Colt Cuthbert. And we're gonna come back for that, uh, for that advantage that he was playing. Is he coming from a, for a scrum right now, or what's he doing? Well, they, were, they had a penalty advantage on the, unless they opted to take a scrum, which I doubt it. Yeah, you know. at this point. But he looks like he's having a chat with the captain, maybe, uh, to get his team's discipline uh, sorted out. There were multiple offsides there by the Dukes. Uh, the Dukes known for re really uh, shooting up on defense. So, you know, when you're pushing that line, you're going to end up in an offside position often. Uh, and it looks like he's sent bend one of the players. Absolutely. He's running off to the sidelines. We can't quite get a number at this moment, but. The Eagles kind of needed that at this point. Let's see if uh, having a man advantage will kind of put some fire into their bellies. We see Lewis Bush push that ball forward. And they're rucking over, and he's going to go ahead and blow that play dead. Again, the Eagles forwards really struggling at the breakdown. Going off their feet and uh, awarding the Dukes the penalty there. And that's going to be some much needed pressure relief for the Dukes, especially with a man on the bench. And we see McGregor kick that ball. And he gets it about to the 22. And assuming they can win another line out, they can really get themselves out of danger pretty quickly now. Is blowing pretty heavily towards them so hopefully he can send that ball uh, nice and straight down the tunnel but they're gonna opt for only a three-man or four-man line out sends that ball in, it goes over his boys. Looks like El Dorado actually won a line out. We see Caleb March with that ball in hand. He's gonna send it off to his uh, line. That's uh, Royce Farmer, sorry, David Allison. Back to Caleb March. And we're coming back. We're gonna have two knock forwards play the first one which means that uh, it will be an Eagles put in on this scrum. We still don't know which player got uh, Sinbind, whether it's a forward or a back. But really from this position, the Eagles have got to feel like they should score. They've got a man up playing from a set phase and they should be looking for the overlap on the outside. And from here it looks like they've got an eight man set back there. Just have a uh, might have a wing or a uh, wing forward flanker off the board. We see Caleb March with that ball in hand. He fakes and he's going to run in. Caleb March is going to put points on the board. That'll be the first five for El Dorado. And despite the difficulties they face so far, this is now a tie game. He put it right under the post and he's got the wind in his back. You know that Caleb March is also the one who takes the kick. So. Let's see if he can put two more points on the board to create a lead. That's certainly what they needed, Aaron. And um, that was a good try. Some lousy defense by the Dukes. They only committed seven players to the scrum in order to not have the overlap against them in the back line. Still managed to you know, not lay a hand on the attacking player. And that ball does go through, so the Eagles are now going to have seven points. 
This game turned around pretty quick. Looks like uh, a little bit of uh, chumminess just to make sure everybody's nobody's mad at each other. And, uh, the kicker who was blocking might have run into uh, the player who was blocking might have run into the kicker, but the Eagles are back in this game with a new lead. Seven points and five for the Albuquerque Dukes. I'm sure the Eagles coaching staff will be very, uh, very excited about that. They've really not been uh, having a lot of success with the ball in hand, so that's a really, that's a really big score um, to be running ahead at this point in the game after being dominated. Your set plays, breakdowns, pretty much all around the pitch. And they pop that ball out. And Caleb March, the try score, takes that ball. He fights off a tackler. They send it out to the line. Right now it's being run up by Danny Welch. Welch passes it off to Cole Custer. And they kind of lose that ball, but it's taken forward by Lane Cuthbert, the uh, hooker. Exciting stuff by the Eagles. They're starting to wake up now. That try really put some fire into them. We see the ball taken forward now by Daniel Garcia. And Caleb March with that ball in hand once more. He offloads it to the wing, Cole Custer. Custer looks like he's gonna get five more points and the Eagles have turned this game around very fast. Five points right under the post for Cole Custer. Certainly some beautiful hands by the Eagles players. They gotta feel like, you know, that's uh, a lot of coaching sessions going to that. And <laughs> some beautiful hands, just, you know, soft hands, guys offloading and some great speed there from the winger starting it down between the sticks. Certainly another two points coming from this. And we saw a lot of uh, a lot of tacklers committing just to bring that number 10 down. So the wing was uh, pretty smart to be close to him so he could catch it. Exactly. And as exactly. you said, those wheels at the end, there were players who could have got him, but they just did not, couldn't catch up. You gotta wonder what uh, sort of difference it will make when the uh, sin bin player for the Dukes come back on. Is that why they are slipping at the moment? Uh, very often you see uh, New Zealand teams, you know, you send in one of their players and they and they start dominating the games somehow. Uh, so very often it's it's a mentality shift, and you got to wonder if if that's bothering the Dukes, you know, having a player in the bin. Yeah. Well, that uh, conversion kick by. That conversion kick by March was good. So that's going to give the El Dorado, e or the Albuquerque Eagles, I should say, 14 points. And it looks like we have a player who uh, got a little bit injured. That's going to be uh, the outside center there, Danny Welsh. He's coming off, and uh, looks like they're talking to the coach and uh, the trainer over there. So he's likely going to be out of the game. Can you see what they're looking at? It looks like they're looking at his at his face, at his head, maybe. maybe and he's uh, limping. Oh, he's limping too. So, could have been the coach was just uh, giving him a couple words of, uh, you know, encouragement. And Possibly so. It looks like he's in a bit of a discomfort having a seat. Well, as I understand, they only have one sub uh, for both of these teams. Yeah, they're both, uh, they both have a lot of men injured, so we'll see what they can do. I know that uh, Victor Saracis and Zach Christopher are pretty much the only ones that the Eagles have. Not sure who plays what position, but we're going to see the replacement come on the field. Resume this game now. And that ball's in hand now for Seth McGregor. McGregor pops it up. It does go 10. We see that ball taken forward by Matt Broyles, who's a late substitution into the game due to those injuries that they've been facing. And tough rucking there. Looks like it's going to be a knock forward, though. See, so you have the uh, backline players from the uh, from the Eagles getting involved again in the rugs. Number ten, who you really want outside structuring your attack, 
getting involved and having to rock over there, clearly seeing that there was some trouble. And the, um, the Eagles lo certainly losing a lot of ball at the, at the breakdown. Well, as you said, losing the ball, so now the uh, Eagle or the uh, Dukes are going to have an opportunity to put the ball into the scrum again. Andres Rialoba. And so far, they've won all of their own scrums and the Eagles. Ball fed under, but the scrum collapses. Eagles scrum looking better suddenly. Looks like the boys uh, got some fire into them. Well, it's always nice once you start putting points on the board. It always uh, takes away the nerves. And once you see somebody else get a try, you want to match them and get your own try. Sure, sure. But we're going to reset this scrum. Rio Loba's got that ball once more. Just making sure that it's all kosher, and that ball does send under there. The Eagles are pushing forward, but the Dukes still have the ball underneath them. Nope, the Eagles have stolen that ball. Looks like there might have been a hand in there, which is illegal, of course. Yeah. Well, that's unfortunate because they were about to uh, they were about to have that ball back, and they could have cleared the ball out. Instead, we're going to see the ball in hand uh, in the hands of uh, McGregor. I'd be surprised if he kicks it from there. You know, playing into the wind, center of the field. Probably going to run it. Oh, he and pops it up. We see March try to take that ball, but quickly turned around. Let's see what the referee says. Now, what would you call there? I guess he's calling it a knock-on. Doesn't matter what anyone next to the field says, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody's a referee when they're watching from the sideline. Exactly, you know? especially when you're a parent or a coach. <laughs> That ball was uh, ruled to knock forward, so on the five, the five meter line, we're gonna see the Eagles take an opportunity to scrum, and they had a lot bigger attack this last time, so maybe they'll be able to win their own scrum back. Well, so what's interesting is if you look down the field, the Dukes have no one back, and if the fly off from the Eagles is clever, he'll cook. And he does it pop it up. There was a lot of space down the left-hand side of the field. It's kind of stared at by uh, Weston Slater, but Slater finally picks it up. Eagles just falling down. Dukes have an opportunity right now. We have Stinson with that ball in hand once more. Stinson pops that ball up. Ball oh. bounces back to the Dukes, and that, that was a great bounce for them. Referee looking around. That player was certainly offside, about two or three meters offside. That should have been a penalty to the Eagles. Uh, the penalty comes their way eventually for another. Uh, Or something or fail, else but failing to release I believe is what that was but that ball does go out of bounds yeah so so if we go back to that last scrum the uh, I, I find it hard to believe that the backline players from the Eagles failed to see the huge amount of space on the far side of the field had they kicked it over there that ball would have just rolled down the field uh, you know it could have gone on because the uh, Duke's wing is not standing back at all. If you look over on the far side of the field, he's standing very flat. Well, a little bit of uh, tough play there on the ball, and he's just going to blow it dead for the knock-on. So we're going to see another scrum. While they're setting the scrum up, we'd like to thank the Library Bar and Grill. You can watch all of Proview Network's broadcasts at the Library Bar and Grill and the brand new Library Bar and Grill on San Mateo. Bring the whole family for the biggest games and the best food. Youth athletes under 12, come in wearing your jersey and eat free off the kids' menu. So on the last scrum that the Dukes were playing offensively, they lost the ball. Do they have to uh, start resume or picking up their game? Or I don't think they should be too concerned. They lost that ball by, uh, you know, the Eagles had some hands in the scrum as we saw them penalized for that. So. Doesn't look like there should be too much concern. The players seem to be standing really far from each other in the back line. Well, Luna loses that ball, and we see uh, we see March pick that ball up for the Eagles. He sends it off to Colt Custer, and Colt Custer almost gets his second try of the game. And the Eagles, ooh, big blow there. Oh, he's gonna blow it dead. I was gonna say uh, 
That player came in from the side there, and the Eagles going to just take that ball forward. That's Lane Cuthbert. The hook really wanted to push that ball forward, and he ate up a lot of meters. And right there we saw Daniel Garcia fight through the uh, Duke's line. That ball sent out. Looks like Graham's got the ball. He sends that ball off to Joshua Wilbur. Wilbur offloads it to Royce Farmer. Game getting a little scrappy now. Uh, I guess we have about 10 minutes or so to go. I'm not sure, I'm not keeping time, but the boys have been playing for the while. You gotta think that they are getting tired, fatigue slipping in, uh, guys knocking balls and so on. So I'm sure they'll enjoy the race that'll be coming soon. Yeah, and an opportunity to sort of reset their attack. I believe the Sinbin player is back on the field. He's not there on the sidelines, so. That ball dropped a little bit once he went to touch, but the referee's gonna let it play. That ball sent off this time to David Allison. Oh, lost there by Sam Spooner, the lock. Well, I spoke with Dave Allison's uh, parents before the game, and they have the uh, suspicion that he's playing with a fractured uh, tibia. Oof. Seems the leg's a bit swollen up. Big boy, you know, tough. Mm -hmm always wants to play until they, you know, drag you off the field, as any <laughs> rugby player should. Absolutely. Well, hopefully it doesn't get to that point. I'm sure he'll be fine. He doesn't seem to be in any sort of discomfort. Nice. I'm sure he'll be very excited to score a try uh, from this position. It's certainly very advantageous for the Eagles. And my understanding is that normally Allison plays the uh, eight-man position, but instead today he's going to be playing, he's that uh, inside center. That is correct. <laughs> well, we're coming back right now for the knock forward there. Really an unfortunate placement for them to do that. Now the Eagles are going to have a scrum down right on the five meter line. And folks, the Barley Room is your home for football and basketball fun. Great food, drinks, and live music, it's all at the Barley Room. And right now, Ethan Pacheco is going to feed that ball into his forwards in a successful scrum down right now. Nope, not successful. We see the Dukes with the ball underneath them. They're going to feed it off and give themselves a little clearance kick. We see Graham getting ready to pick that ball up, just trying to figure out where it is. He's going to push forward, but immediately taken down. He offloads it now to Cole Custer. Custer gives it off to uh, Royce Farmer. And now they're going to set up their attack once more, taken again by Custer. Custer offloads it to March. March comes back on the inside. He's fighting through. He's going to send that off to Allison. Allison is fighting through. He really wants that white line. He wants to put the ball down himself, but not so successful there. Pushed forward right now by Danny, or by, uh, I apologize. That would be Royce Farmer. Seems like they crossed the, the try line. Ball was held up though, so it'll be a five meter scrum to the Eagles. Certainly be able to uh, stitch a couple of phases together now. That was about four, five, six uh, phases of play. And um, they're starting to look very dangerous on attack. And all that work they had to put in on the last one just to uh, make up for a lost scrum. A successful scrum right now could uh, save them having to run up the field again. We do see the fullback setting up to play the attack. That could be dangerous for them. Lost again. And they're going to clear it right now. Just goes right into the hands of Thomas Ingram. Ingram pushing forward. He wants that uh, try, but held up there. And he is going to blow the try right there. That was the uh, back line right there, Daniel Garcia. Put a third try on the board for the Eagles. It's going to bring them up to 19 points pending another kick conversion by uh, Caleb Marsh. And so far, Marsh has been two for two and he still has the wind at his back, so not too much angle on this kick either. Some of the Dukes players seeming, uh, seemingly unhappy about something, having a chat with the ref, uh, trying to get something cleared up. You know, once that call's been made, it's never going to be reversed, especially here where we don't have uh, no TV replays. <laughs> yeah, can't just uh, do the uh, box like they do on some of those bigger games. But we're going to 
and see March kick that ball. And we see the flags go up. That's going to bring the score up to 21. Sounds like he just signaled the halftime. And that is what happened. So at the half, our score is going to be 21 for the Albuquerque Eagles and 5 for the Albuquerque Dukes. We'll be right back with the second half of this game. Well, I'm going to the frontier, walking to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. Streamline Swimming is New Mexico's premier swim store featuring the latest in training equipment and competitive swimming apparel. Whether you're looking for swimwear to lounge by the pool or something more professional, Streamline has it. With main brands such as Speedo, Nike, TYR, and Dolphin, you can be sure to find what you are looking for. And even if swimming is not your thing, Streamline provides uniforms for any sport you need. With no job too small and no setup fees, you can outfit your team with the best screen printed and embroidery design uniforms. And with a friendly staff on site, our employees are always willing to help. Come and visit Streamline Swim Store and Streamline Athletics. Call us at 505-503-7460 or visit us at 6901 Gruber Avenue, Northeast. Build them a gift they will never throw away. Create a custom frame that commemorates their achievements. FindFramesNM.com Where the frame is as unique as the person being celebrated when it has to be special. Give them something different. Dazzling displays. The Barley Room Bar and Grill is proud to support our community. We offer a wide selection of drinks and food that will suit any taste. Come and enjoy some of our great appetizers or one of our enticing entrees. Sit on our patio and soak in a beautiful New Mexico day. Come listen to some great live music, attend one of our movie or karaoke nights, or just watch a game with your friends. The fun never stops at the Barley Room, 5200 Eubank Northeast, Suite B5 in Albuquerque. See you here. MCM Elegante Hotel and Event Center, a full-service, four-star property, where cleanliness, friendliness, and impeccable service is our standard. Complimentary shuttle, state-of-the-art fitness center with pre-core equipment adjacent to our indoor pool, jacuzzi, and sun deck. Outstanding meeting facilities for any size meeting or event. 341 exquisitely designed, newly renovated guest rooms and 18 suites with private balconies. Complimentary full hot breakfast with eggs cooked to order in our Mesa Grill. Call us now to schedule your next getaway. ProView Networks would like to thank Hi and Heather Roberts for their generous support of our mission to help raise the profile of New Mexico's youth and to serve the communities that support them. Hi and Heather Roberts are proud members of the American National Family of Companies and serve to provide life, health, auto and home insurance to people like you.
Come check out the brand new Library Bar and Grill. It's the best place to bring your family to catch all the action from high school, college, and professional sports. Great drinks, great food, and 40 HD TVs so you don't miss anything. Youth athletes, bring your sports jersey and eat free on the kids' menu. Come visit us, 5001 San Mateo, just north of Montgomery. Wondering if you can afford the ring of her dreams? At Crown Jewels and Coin, we actually double the diamond for what you would pay at a chain store. Trade in your old jewelry towards GIA certified diamonds. Choose from a large selection of settings featuring Viraggio. We can customize a design and offer no credit check, two year interest free financing. Get more than you ever thought possible. Here at Albuquerque's Family Jeweler for over 50 years. Crown Jewels and Coin for all you treasure. 3248 San Mateo at Kruger's Corner. Welcome back. We're about to get set for the second half. We see the uh, players are all ready to go. We're seeing uh, referee Maka Satini get back onto the field. He's wearing that uh, pink, pink Stade Francais jersey. I would have loved to be in those circles during halftime to, uh, to hear what the coaches were telling the boys. I'm sure the, uh, I'm sure the uh, Eagles will be really happy with the current position that they're in given the struggle in the in the front um, and the uh, the Duke certainly would have been told to uh, take take advantage of this of this strong back wind you know look for the corners would certainly be the smart thing to do uh, the wings from both teams uh, do not seem to be helping the fullbacks very much and so there's some wide open spaces in the back mm -hmm. uh, which is great for a kicker to exploit we saw a little bit of that right as the uh, half was ending. The kicks weren't quite long enough, but... Well, this is interesting. Coming for a scrum for the beginning? No. I think the referee will be having a word with both teams. Looks like they're all putting their hands in there. Ducks, ducks, ducks. Well, this is, you know, nice to see. Certainly very interesting, you know. You still have a half to play against each other. Boys are going to be running into each other. Some stuff, tough stuff still coming up, and then uh, everyone made to uh, do a little uh, cheer together. <laughs> Not sure how some of the guys feel about that. <laughs> well, I know that they'll be playing together for the all-star squads here, so don't want to make too many enemies. I see. You might have to be offloading it to the guy uh, <laughs> in a couple of weeks, you know. And that's why I think you kind of saw the uh, number 10 kind of joking around with them. But he's going to pop that ball right into the middle of empty space, picked up by the Dukes. Well, you can't do a quick kickoff for the start of a game. So there seems to be a lot of confusion, um, even for myself. Yeah, I was going to sure say exactly a lot of confusion for me as well. <laughs> I don't know what he's saying there. See, the referee has to check with the captains from both teams before, he, uh, before the kickoff is allowed. Absolutely. There was no whistle even. <laughs> and so the uh, fly-off just uh, took it into his own hands to decide when the game starts. And there's the whistle. As you mentioned, he kicks it not even 10 meters, maybe three. And we're going to hear what the option is. Sounds like uh, they want to re-kick. That is certainly an interesting choice, uh, especially since the Dukes have the uh, stronger scrum. Absolutely. Popped it up, this time taken. That was the player who was off the pitch. Looks like he's back on. He offloads that ball, sends it out to the wing. Or I apologize, the inside center. Who offloads it to the back line. It's uh, taken down. They're gonna spin it out wide right now in the hands of Mike uh, Lavatai Sagato. And Sagato, Lavatai Sagato pushing through. Last person to beat is the fullback, Graham. Graham gets his hand on him, but it doesn't matter. That ball is taken into the try. I believe that was Hayden Nelson, the number 11. That is certainly the start that the Dukes would have wanted from this game, uh, from this half. Especially, you know, since they dominated every physical aspect of the of the previous half. They, uh, I'm sure they felt hard done by the scoreboard. And that is definitely what their coach would have wanted, definitely what the players would have wanted. You know, some uh, shifty feet from the uh, number 10 there of the Dukes. 
just seem to run around the defensive players of the Eagles. They looks like they get sucked in a little bit, like we discussed in the first half yeah. when the Dukes kept on playing the blind side. Mm -hmm. And uh, the flyoff just saw that there were only two defenders on the outside, and he uh, he must have noticed that the one of them was uh, was a lock forward, and he just <laughs> took he took him on, and he got around him. And then after that, he was left with just number 15 with the wind at his back. McGregor puts that ball through. That's going to give him 12 points now. So with that, the Dukes are at 12. The Eagles still at 21. And this game just got a whole lot more interesting now. That's right, Aaron. Very exciting start to a first half. That's exactly what you want. Get both teams fired up. I'm sure we'll see the Eagles come back right now. You know, certainly try. Hopefully we get to see some good running rugby, and some good offloads. Yeah, especially with this win, they're going to need to play a little bit tighter than normal. And I'm sure Graham back there at the fullback position would like a little bit more help on the next one. So <laughs> Barely got his hand on the number 10 as it was. So we're going to see March kick that ball. Kind of hits the ground, but it's taken forward now. Tries to fight him off, but not quite there. That was Seth McGregor who had that ball. Very good rocking from the Dukes. And now the Dukes have broken through again. That's Benny James. He throws that ball like a football, and it works. Intercepted this time by March for the Eagles. And that ball is spun out. We see it now sent around to the uh, to the wing forward, Thomas Ingram. He's completely isolated. Well, you talked you talked a little bit about that before, the fact that they really don't seem to be planning any of their uh, attacks. Well, in that case, they just had a quick turnover, so I'm sure they didn't have much time to, uh, you know, get something to stitch together. But the support play from the Duke certainly much better than that by the Eagles. And you got to feel that the Eagles have some players that they that are individually brilliant that they. Um, almost don't feel like or they're not used to having to support those guys and so when they get tackled they're just completely isolated which is Absolutely. the case in the, you know, for, a, for a big part of this game so far. Well that's going to result in the Dukes having the opportunity to put that ball or sorry the Eagles having the opportunity to put that ball into the scrum and they've been very iffy so far looks like they have hooked their own ball this time and now sent out to March March fakes to Allison, sends it off to uh, the number 14. Oh, oh little, trick, little trick play, not quite successful. <laughs> we, say, we saw referee uh, Satini kind of shrug there like, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that was a, uh, pretty sure that was a knock on. Sometimes it's tough, Aaron. <laughs> you know, players are between you and the ball and you know, there's a lot of reaction from players when something happens, and when that happens and you didn't see anything, you know, particularly occur, then it could be very confusing uh, for a referee. Yeah. Probably better to just get it all settled anyways, make sure that, uh, you know, you can get your eye on the game. And this ball's going to be fed in now by Andres uh, Riloba. As he gets ready, that ball is in. It is hooked successfully by the Dukes. Comes out and now faked inside to uh, Mitchell. Mitchell pushing forward with that ball. He offloads it now to uh, Levati Sagato, who set up that last try. And blown dead. Very good counter racking from the Eagles there. Uh, something that we haven't seen so far in this game and putting the Dukes under pressure and uh, you know forcing the knock on so That was some good technical just some good technical counter rucking boys got in behind each other and just rucked right over that ball It's good stuff We hear a lot of whistling Not just from the uh, referee anymore either from the sidelines too, <laughs> but wants to watch to make sure that those binds are incorrect. And Pacheco feeds that ball under. Looks like the Eagles did hook their own ball. Sends it out wide. That's Graham with the ball. 
Ram offloads it to his uh, winger, Cole Custer. Ram with that ball back in his hands, he gets taken down. And the support is there. Now we see Daniel Garcia, who had a try earlier, push that ball forward. And we're seeing an advantage being played. Oof, that ball lost forward there. That was uh, Lewis Bush. Unfortunate drop. Quickly. might have been a little bit forward, but either way, it went out of bounds. So from my angle, it looked like the pass was good. The uh, the fly up there, Caleb, just overran his player a bit. And so he had to reach behind himself to get to the ball, which made it difficult. As I think they're getting just a little overexcited. They haven't gotten any points on the board in the second half. And you know, that's that might be causing the excitement for these, uh, for these Eagle players. We see the players drop out of the line out and then back in. Just trying to match. And they set out the line, it goes way over. It wasn't straight anyways, because the wind took it right there at the end, but the Eagles end up winning that ball. He's gonna blow it dead. And we see March kick that ball. Kicked it in bounds. It's an unfortunate mistake there, and that ball's going to be kicked out now. There was nobody back. You kind of mentioned that the wings weren't uh, helping out. And now we see March with that ball one more time. He's trying to fight through, but looks like he's playing as if he's the only one on the field. Well, Aaron, there's certainly none of his players around him. <laughs> so uh, that middle, little bit of uh, stepping this way and that just bought his team some time for his guys to get back and behind him, support him on the attack. And we see Graham with that ball. He's swallowed up by the uh, Duke defensive line. And that ball is lost. We see now the Dukes have the ball. That's Matt uh, Mitchell. Offloaded now to Stinson. Stinson gets the ball, and he just dodges his opposing wing. Oh, a little bit late hit there. But either way, we see Mitchell get that try. Or uh, I apologize, Isaac Stinson get that try. And so that's going to give them another five points. They'll be up to... 17 pending the try conversion. It's going to be a little bit more difficult even with the wind at his back. We've seen McGregor doesn't kick from the from a tee, he kicks from the drop, so. Has not been very successful with it so far. No. He's missed a couple. Well, so far he's one for one for two, I believe. On his kicks. We'll see how the third attempt goes. And he's right up close and personal, so we can see how he sets up. And that ball, not even close. So that's going to keep the score at 17 for the Albuquerque Dukes and 21 for the Albuquerque Eagles. And this game has just gotten tighter. We'd like to thank the MCM Elegante Hotel and Event Center, a full-service, four-star property where cleanliness, friendliness, and impeccable service is our daily standard. We honor NMAA rates for 2016. And articles for her. Timeless styles, uniquely for you. For info, visit them on 8510 Montgomery or give them a call at 505-298-6700. That ball had to be uh, found. They had to recover it from uh, probably the next county. <laughs> After that wind took it away. Yeah, it feels like the wind's getting worse, isn't it? Yeah. Every few minutes it, it dies down, but uh, you know, right as people are getting ready to kick, it always picks up. And we see March put that ball back into play. Taken forward now by the Dukes, lost a bit. And taken now by the Eagles. Eagles have the push right now. Sent off to uh, the number 14, Cole Custer. And fought forward by Daniel Garcia. And now sent out, we see March with that ball. He kind of pops it up. Chased down by the Dukes. Now being fought forward, that ball's lost forward by the Dukes. Probably gonna come back for that scrum even if the Eagles did recover the ball. 
And I feel that was a wasted opportunity on attack for the Eagles. They were looking for the kick, but it wasn't on. The, uh, the Dukes had a man back there who didn't have to move. And then uh, the Eagles players were not on for that kick. <laughs> they were just not thinking the same same thoughts at the, as the uh, fly-off. Yeah. Having, uh, being on the same page usually is what leads to the points, and in that case, they were not. Exactly. But luckily for them, the uh, big defensive play was able to retain the ball, so now they have it in the scrum. It does come back to their side, and they're driving forward to protect it. Sent out to March. March to Allison. Allison hits a couple defenders and keeps moving. Sent out now, March has that ball one more time to Custer. Custer fighting through defenders. He's got Graham. Graham's getting ready to ruck over. Oh. Not releasing the tackled player, I believe, is what that was. And we see uh, Joshua Graham push forward. And Graham goes down for the try. That's another five points. Crafty play there by Joshua Graham to give them uh, a little bit more breathing room. It's going to bring them up to 26, pending another attempted conversion. It's going to be a pretty difficult angle, as well as having the wind at his back, though. Yes, this will certainly be a tough kick. But you know, the five points will certainly be good. And that's exactly what the Eagles needed. Just get some points on the board in the second half. Mm -hmm. And now they can uh, start building some pressure like the, uh, like the Dukes have done up until this point. Absolutely. We saw a little bit better of uh, attack there by them. They were together. They had their support waiting, you know, standing behind to make sure that they didn't lose the ball. It looks like they're gaining a little more confidence in their, in their forwards too. The, the backs are actually spreading on attack um, and not looking so, so, uh, so focused on, on getting into those rugs and helping the, helping the pack to clean out. And you can see March's hair getting blown by that wind. Well, the kick had the distance, or no, it didn't have the distance. It had the line, but it did not have the distance because of that win. So that's going to keep the score at 26 for the Albuquerque Eagles. <coughs> that was a very good kick considering how strong the wind is. And from where we sit, you could see that that was, you know, dead center uh, Absolutely. in the middle of the six. And if that had a little more punch on it, it might have gone, the, might have gone all the way. But he's... Caleb certainly is one of the best goal kickers uh, in the Rio Grande High School League. Um, certainly has either has some good coaching or just has a good natural ability, but his kicking has been fantastic so far this, this season. And against the wind, he's been pretty successful at the kickoffs today as well. Exactly, except for that one who got yeah. begging. But, but he probably didn't catch it right because it didn't even go yeah. three meters. So. But right now we're going to see McGregor, who's got a great kick boot on him. He'll send it out wide, goes deep into the line. That was fought forward by Royce Farmer. Great steal. And we saw March try to play that ball. He plays the defense at least. But we see Garcia get in there. Oh. And March intercepts that ball. That's the number 10, Caleb March. He's rushing down the field. Does he have the, the legs? A little bit high tackle there, but either way, he puts that ball for the try. Beautiful play by Hold on March. a second. That's not a try. That's not a try? Oh, he I apologize. He played the ball on the ground, I believe. Yep, not putting that ball down. Apologize. The uh, the way he had his hand <laughs> up kind of looked the same it's, way that he does the try. It, it sounded like a happy whistle, didn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Can we get the number of the player who chased him down there? That was certainly excellent dedication. I think it's the inside center for the Dukes. And we see McGregor kick that ball. Hopefully that car has insurance. And that's going to give them uh, a little bit of breathing room. Hopefully they can all, uh, while that ball's being chased down, yeah. catch their breath and What excellent regroup. defense. What excellent commitment from that Dukes player, if we can uh, pull up his name. I think he has the 12 jersey on, maybe. That would be uh, Mateus Mitchell. Fantastic. He chased the man down all the way across the field. Oh, uh, he has 13 on it. No, that's 12. He has got 12 on his back. Yeah, so that is Mitchell, and he did have a try earlier as well. You know, if this turns out to be a close game towards the end and they uh, they manage to pull it through, he's, uh, his teammates will certainly owe him big time because that was a fantastic, 
fantastic chase across the across the field. Never gave up on the play. And that ball fed in. Won by the Eagles. And now they're fighting forward with it. Eric Galano sends it off to March. And March doesn't want to go down. His support is there. Sent out wide now to Custer. And Custer blindly throws that ball. And taken now by the Dukes. Save there that was taken forward by uh, Mike Lavatai Sagato. And now we're spinning it out wide once more. The Eagles uh, poached that ball. Dukes were kind of standing around, but they're getting out rucked right now. So March takes that ball, sends it off to Graham. Graham wants another try. And he loses that ball, but picked up now by the number 11. That's Royce Farmer, but it was obviously forward, so it's going to be coming back. Well, Aaron, what you just said about the uh, Eagles getting a bit of physical dominance here, it's interesting. You've got to wonder what happened, you know? It's, we're well into the second half, but, but they're playing against the wind. Um, You've you got to wonder if it's maybe the fitness of the Dukes maybe letting them down a bit, and may, maybe the Eagles, the fitter team on the field. Rugby is definitely a game about uh, stamina. It certainly is. You don't, you don't just run around for a couple of minutes. You got to run around for the whole, I believe they're playing 30 minute half, so you exactly. got to run around for the whole hour. And it's not just the running, you know, it's that contact, tackling, going to ground, getting back up again. That's what really tires you out. The Dukes are going to have the ball now on that knock forward by the fullback Graham. And that ball is fed in there. Something happened. Looked like he didn't like the uh, scrum, so they're going to play it again. And now we see, before you're mentioning how the wings weren't playing back, we do see two, uh, two Eagles players over here deep. Well, it's very possible that they're listening in. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe their coach has a uh, feed to our mics. <laughs> So the scrum binds up one more time. And they're looking for that ball. They sent it out wide. They're going to play with the ball, finally pop it up. We see that ball being chased by both Graham and uh, his help over there. And Graham's pushing forward with it one more time. He likes to have the ball in his hands, it would seem. Play it dead for uh, diving over the ruck, I believe. March takes that quick ball. He's running through. And he didn't get the try before, but now he does. That is the number 10, Caleb March. He's going to put five more points up for the Eagles. That's going to give them a 14-point lead pending his conversion. And he's put given himself a little bit easier kick this time. He certainly has. And uh, what we said earlier, I think... I think the Dukes are in a bit of trouble here. They look tired. The, the, the boys' shoulders are hanging. The heads are down. We just look at their uh, their body language. It looks like they're out of this game almost. Do you think and it's a uh, fitness issue or just a morale I, issue I at this think, point? I think it's a fitness issue. You know, uh, at this point they're just being they're just being dominated physically. They're ha they don't have the advantage that they used to have at scrums, lineouts, or rucks. They seem to be giving away a lot of penalties, and they'd really have to be a big, you know, change in, in attitude for them to turn this around. Maybe a quick try can figure, fix that, but if you just look at the guys walking back, you know, there's, there doesn't seem to be a big sense of, of urgency. Well, right now the Eagles are going to have 33 points or 35. I believe they had uh, 21 to 26, and then after that, from 26, they get seven, so that should put them at 33, yeah? Oh, they caught them napping. They use that quick line out that uh, the Eagles like to do. Instead, the Dukes did it this time. They've poached that ball. Just took it from him. <laughs> yeah, right out of his hands. They picked him up and held him long enough to take it. 
They're going to send it to the big boys. Right now, Isaro Ramirez. And they got to set up. They look very tired. Levante Segato, Segato to Mitchell. They offload that ball. And is he awarding the try there? No. He's pointing somewhere. Oh, we got a player down on the field. I think we might have. It looked like he was holding his head, but now it looks like he's holding his hand. That might be a uh, no, dislocated fingers are a very common sight in rugby. On a cold day, you don't want those happening. It's quite, yeah, quite uncomfortable. Yeah, much more stinging. And he is taking a look at the hands. It so. certainly looks like the referee awarded the try, and that was some good interplay by the backs from the uh, Dukes there. The fly-off from the Duke certainly seems like he likes to run across the field and he just brings a whole lot of defenders with him. Got to wonder if his coach is looking at that and, uh, you know, thinking maybe you should spin the, spin the ball a little earlier. You know, have the ball do the work, as they say. <laughs> so I can't quite tell. Looks like they're going to come for a scrum, but or maybe they're just high-fiving. Players do like look like uh, they are having fun together. It's not often you see something like that on a rugby field, it's at least while the boys are playing each other. <laughs> Can't quite tell what they're up to right now, but uh, we do see the athletic trainer taking a look. I'm sure the referee called time off. Yeah. But it doesn't look like he's going to get off the field. Well, he might be in a lot of pain, but, you know, you'll have to drag him off that field. <laughs> well, I believe we also saw their uh, their only substitute is on the field now, too. I believe he's wearing number 20 there on the very far side. So it looks like a 22 dropout, which and means they didn't score a try, of course. And instead, we're going to see him take that ball. Oh, lost by Sagato. Levante Sagato. Pushing forward, and that ball's just picked up there by the inside center. That's Allison. And then Turnover the again. Dukes do it on them. That's Benny James. Levate Sagato, he's sending it out. Right now it's sent out to the number six. That's Marlon Malave. And we see Bush trying to hold on to him. Probably an offsides there. High tackle there. High tackle, is that what it was? At least in a, a, a stiff uh, arm to the face is what happened, so. Uh. Well, the referee's beating himself in the face right now, so. <laughs> Either he's trying to wake himself up or he's trying to indicate what went on. Might well, be hard to keep up with these, uh, with these young men if you're, uh, if you're half asleep. <laughs> so I'm sure he's just trying to signal uh, to us. That, what you know, happened, yeah. Was, wasn't a high tackle, but just a, a, a straight arm to the face. Yeah. The. Uh, we're always encouraged to uh, to keep the safety in mind when we referee these games. Uh, certainly, when you when you're dealing with high school or younger uh, kids, you don't want to see injuries there, uh, especially when it's an up-and-coming sport in the U.S. You know. Yeah. And we see the Dukes pushing forward. Oh, just lost forward too. That is unfortunate. That's the kind of thing that just breaks that momentum. And we saw. We saw that ball taken. I believe that was uh, Seth McGregor, the one who was examining his hand before. And we saw while he was on the ground that he was checking it out once more. Well, they set up Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs and the Frontier Restaurant are proud supporters on New, Me on New Mexico Athletics. They've been serving Albuquerque and supporting our kids for over 40 years. Four great locations, including the Frontier Restaurant across the street UNM Central Avenue campus. And the scrums are going to come together. Hopefully, well, the Eagles are going to feed it in there. It's getting spun a little bit, but they set it. We see March with that ball one more time. Tries to offload it to Allison. Kind of lose the ball. Comes out the back one more time. We got a back line kind of covering it up for us. Grabbing him a little bit high there. Oof. Hopefully he's okay after that hit. 
But he picks that ball immediately and starts going once more. That's Eric Galano who's been fighting with it. Faked inside, taken down now. That's Joshua Wilbur. We see March with that ball off to Graham. Graham fights inside, he looks at Custer. He sends it off to Custer. Custer tries to get around the referee. He's gonna use the referee a little bit as a block and we see Custer with those wheels. Can they take him down? It does not look like it. And we're gonna have Cole Custer. He'll take another try for the game. That's gonna bring the score up to 38 for the Albuquerque Eagles. And it certainly seems, as you said, that they were just too tired to take him down. They had him within arm's reach, but. They looked, uh, they looked like they were up for the challenge for a bit down there. And uh, unfortunately, just a small knock on from one of the players, lost focus for a second. And you know, fatigue does that to you. Lost, lost focus, knocked the ball on. Eagles got a sc scrum and uh, they ran it back all the way up the field and uh, scored a beautiful try. And uh, I certainly see it being very difficult for the Dukes to come back from this. Absolutely, there can't be very much time left in this game. Definitely not. Th this is the part of the game where it really turns fun for the, for the wingers and the, and the quicker guys on the field. Uh, like we just saw number 14 there. We, we know he's quick. We saw him in the first half just take off from a couple of uh, from under a couple of Dukes players. And that's exactly what just happened there. A beautiful offload to him and no one was gonna catch him yes. as soon as he saw that try line. And March puts the ball through one more time. It's gonna bring the score up to 40 for the Albuquerque Eagles. And thus far, that's gonna be his fifth out of six conversions attempted today. Definitely getting a lot of practice for his boot. Very good, very good stats and uh, such strong wins. Absolutely, especially playing against it. He's only missed uh, one of the three conversions that he's attempted this half. True. But it always helps when you put the ball right under the uh, post as well. <laughs> he's got his teammates to thank for that. And we see Custer with that ball one more time. He offloads it there to the uh, wing forward, Thomas Ingram. And the Dukes poach that ball. Nope. We see Custer with that ball for the Eagles. He's standing alone. And we're seeing an advantage being played, but that ball's being taken forward now by uh, David Allison. And now we're going to see uh, Garcia. Just going to blow it now for that uh, penalty that he was playing the advantage for. Looks like he's stopping time. Someone's down injured. If it was a penalty uh, and the uh, Eagles were allowed to play quick, I can almost guarantee that Caleb would have gone and uh, number 10, Caleb. Yeah, he's uh, been, that's been his uh, tap and go is his thing. That's what he does pretty well. It's put points on the board. Looks like we're going to see. Uh, we're going to see Joshua Wilbur leaving the field right now. Not sure if he's off for the rest of the game or what, but I know they don't have very many substitutes. And we see the, our athletic trainer Kai get off the field, so play will resume. And there was a knock forward. That's what he was playing the advantage on. Referee Satini is always making it nice and easy for us to see what he's doing over there. Nice clear signals. And we're going to see Pacheco put that ball back into the scrum. All right, as the wind starts to die down, comes right back out. Well, it's difficult when you're a referee, you know, to keep up with everything that's happening around you. And uh, it's, it's kind of nice to know that he's, uh, that he's thinking of us too when, he, uh, <laughs> when he's making those calls see them try the scrum one more time. Looked like he probably hit one of the uh, props feet when he tried to feed it in. Ball comes right back out the scrum one more time. Happened again. You gotta wonder what's happening in there. It almost seems like the hooker's just purposefully kicking it straight back out the side. Uh, unless he's just not getting a clean hook. Well he's gonna get a third opportunity. I don't know how many times he's gonna let them uh, try this. Three times will be the maximum. Bind together. Hopefully they can uh, Lane Cuthbert for the Eagles. He's probably hoping that he gets a little bit cleaner on this one. And he does. They're pushed back a little bit, but they do set up. And that ball's spun, spun out now. Caleb Marsh has that ball. They're going to 
go down with it. Marsh with that ball once more, sends it off to Garcia. And Marsh one more time, sends it out to Allison. Allison to Graham. Graham's pushing forward, he spins it out to Custer. Custer has nowhere to go, so he sends it to Graham. Graham sidestepping, but he doesn't have very much room. He's gonna go down and we see the Eagles standing over him. And we see Custer oh. with that ball. Custer sees green grass and he'll put a third try on the board. Albuquerque Eagles now with 45 points. Custer with three tries on the game, completes his hat trick. Well, it's quite simple now. The uh, Eagles seem to have found their stride and they're playing very good structured rugby, spreading it wide, making sure they get clean ball out. And then they've got their next two, three phases of attack set up while the, uh, while the Dukes are still scrambling to figure out what to do on defense. So, so the Eagles certainly playing the more structured game at the moment, while the uh, Dukes are trying to play some of, somewhat of an open game, which is going to be it's going to be tough when you're, especially when you're tired. Sounds like that is the end of the game. Final score: 45 for the Albuquerque Eagles and 17 for the Albuquerque Dukes. Thank you all for joining us. Thanks for everybody at New Mexico Youth Rugby. We'd also like to thank Steve Davis, the president of ProView Networks, Marty Watts, the director of Rugby Saturday. Our cameraman today was William Powell of Unique Visuals by William, and our director, Joshua Brown. For Hedo and myself, thank you, and have a great day.